The second generation of Eurocoat will maintain the same overall scope and structure as the first generation. The second generation will remain the design standards for buildings and civil engineering works covering structural and geotechnical design. And they'll remain structured in a similar fashion, a series of standards split into multiple parts. So what are the headline differences? Well, in the first generation, we have 10 standards, EN 1990 through to EN 1999, split into 59 parts. In the second generation, we're going to have 11 standards with the introduction of EN 19100, covering design of structural glass. And then we're going to be complementing those standards with 12 technical specifications and seven technical reports. In the second generation of the Eurocodes, we're going to have new Eurocode parts in the year 1991, covering actions. There will be about actions due to atmospheric icing and actions due to uh, waves and currents on coastal structures. We've got a new coverage for assessment and retrofitting of existing structures. New materials like fiber reinforced concretes or higher strength steels. There's also new content on fiber reinforced composites, tension, membrane tension structures, but these will be covered into separate technical specifications. In terms of other topics, we've included more coverage around climate change, providing scaling factors within the Eurocodes for environmental actions to enable those long-term climatic effects to be taken into account because, of course, what we're designing with the Eurocodes are typically very long-life assets. We've also looked to strengthen and provide greater clarity around provisions for robustness. And that's proved a tricky area. And robustness is something which is subject to quite a variation in national regulation. And, and when those regulations differ, it's, it's, it's hard to cover those topic areas in, in, in the Eurocodes. But we've looked to make progress in that area, both by extending the coverage within the Eurocodes, but also by developing companion material, including a SEN technical report setting out best practices in this field. The interface between the Eurocodes and other standards has been really important to us. And so we've taken time to, to understand what all those parameters of materials or products that the Eurocode design rules rely upon are and made sure that those are more clearly articulated within the Eurocodes themselves. We've also sought to include more material on numerical methods, unlocking greater potential for engineers to use advanced numerical methods to optimize their design of structures. And of course, as a core cross-cutting issue, all of those activities that we've undertaken to strengthen ease of use. General presentations have been developed and they outline the key changes made to different Eurocode parts. These are already available on the JRC website. There will be additional, more detailed presentations which are currently being developed and they will also be shared on the JRC website in new course.